The Atlantic Ocean heating up as tropical development becomes more likely over the coming days. I'll have the latest on when and where and how that may impact your forecast in today's video. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this wonderful Saturday, July 19th, and starting to get towards the dog days of summer. And with that, the heat, the humidity, the afternoon storms, and potential tropical development all on the table here to end out the month of July. And a couple different areas we're going to watch here, from the Gulf to the main development region, a couple pockets of favorable timing that could lead to that next name storm, which would be Dexter on our list. Now, if you're new to the channel, uh, welcome. My name's Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte, and uh, it's an honor to have you here with me today, and I'm excited to give you the latest information on that forecast. Now, I do ask if you haven't already, though, go ahead, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're up to date with the uh, ever and uh, latest model data that we have, always changing, and uh, I think that's going to continue here over the foreseeable future until we can figure out this whole uh, maybe AI thing. Maybe that'll uh, fix it all in one day. I won't even have to do these videos and you'll just know what's coming. But uh, you know, maybe on second thought, let's try to avoid that if at all possible. All right, let's dive on into that forecast for you and give you the latest starting with our satellite loop. You can see here uh, on our water vapor loop, we've got a couple pockets of some active weather out there still dealing with this big ridge over the central and eastern United States uh, kind of parked into here. And that is leading to a continued ring of fire pattern. You've heard it before. We're talking about it again. Uh, it's leading to an active stretch of storms on the outside of that and within that dome of heat, hot and humid uh, with very limited afternoon storms. The good news though is that's over places that have been hit very hard already near Texas and Oklahoma. We've had a lot of flooding there this month, so we'll take that dry dome uh, for folks back out that way. Now elsewhere in the Atlantic, here's that area we're watching for potential development, a nice healthy wave out in that main development region. Uh, it is going to have to fight with some wind shear and dry air, but I'll tell you, I think before it has to fight it too bad. It's going to have a favorable time period to potentially develop into Dexter, and we'll show you that here in just a moment. Elsewhere, uh, that energy on the outside of that ring of fire going to get off the southeast coastline, off the Carolina coastline, and potentially try to form into something, and that's going to kind of get broken up into two pieces. Some of that energy is going to get back into the Gulf. That could do something, uh, kind of combined with this energy you see out here, and then other bits of it is likely going to get ripped out into the Atlantic and uh, not be anybody's problem. So definitely a lot to break down in today's video uh, regarding all of these systems. And you can already see here, as we take a look at uh, the NHC forecast, they are also highlighting that area in the Atlantic. This is new compared to yesterday, running a 20% chance right now of developing into the next name storm within the next seven days. And uh, you can see the good news is that development region is well out there. So we'll have plenty of time to track it. And without spoiling too much, that could be good news in multiple ways. And you'll see that here coming up in the next segment. The Atlantic sure is warm right now, as you would expect for the month of July, and that's going to be a key component to that tropical forecast. Now, the warmest waters in the Atlantic right now are in the Gulf. We talked about this uh, last week, or I guess earlier this week, I should say, with Invest 93L as that attempted to develop. Luckily, never quite did it, but it did get close as it was just too far inland and not over these warm waters of the Gulf. Now, if anything can get in the waters of the Gulf, plenty of explosive fuel there for tropical development. We've also got Pretty warm waters here out towards Bermuda and a stretch of warm waters here down into that main development region of the Atlantic. And that's where we're going to need to watch for potential tropical development. So all the places that some of the models uh, show a storm developing are over some of the warmer parts of the Atlantic. So you would expect that for sure this time of the year is a key ingredient in uh, kind of a hurricane genesis, if you will, kind of like tornado genesis, but for a hurricane, right? So we'll definitely continue to watch that. But that's going to be something that's definitely promoting tropical development over uh, the coming time frame. Another thing that's going to be promoting it uh, is some moisture out there depending on where you're at. And I think this area in the main development region, it's going to hit the perfect kind of time frame and window for development. And we'll time that out for you. So here's the latest GFS model. Brand new, just came out. In fact, I waited an extra 20 minutes to record this just so I could show it to you. And uh, this is the area we're watching. Notice we've got this pocket of moisture down here in that main development region and uh, surrounded by, generally speaking, a lot of dry air but it's compact enough and it has enough moisture to work with that is going to attempt to develop into that next name storm. Now let's time it out for you a little bit more. I think it's right in here that the storm's going to have the best chance of developing. This is when the National Hurricane Center has that circle on the map. This is by, uh, you know, a couple of days from now, we'll say Tuesday through Thursday of this coming week looks to be the most favorable time frame. You'll note uh, a pretty good area of moisture down here. Still, you know, a lot of dry air to the north it's going to have to compete with, but 
moist enough for that potential of development out this way. And we'll keep it going ahead into time. And uh, you notice it gets into the Caribbean eventually and uh, moisture stays pretty high there. So we've got warm sea surface temperatures. We've got a moistening atmosphere for this thing, I'd say. What about wind shear? And I think that's the real key to the forecast here. Uh, I think we're going to have enough uh, you know, humidity and enough uh, in terms of warm sea surface temperatures for development. Wind shear going to be a little bit more iffy. Now, like I said, there's going to be a time frame, a window for this thing to fit in. And I think it'll definitely have a favorable period for potential development right around here. This is that time frame I showed you. Uh, notice this little pocket here that the, the storm's going to be traveling through, going to be in a lighter wind shear for at least a period of time. Now to the north where we have dry air, we've got dry air and harsh wind shear. So if the storm moves further north and projected right now, probably going to get ripped apart and not really have a chance of developing into anything. If it stays is far enough south and can stay in this, uh, you know, favorable corridor, I think it'll have a pretty good shot at getting that next name. Either way, though, the good news is this. As we continue ahead in time, watch the Caribbean next week. I mean, folks, the wind shear stays harsh over the Caribbean, and uh, that's pretty typical this time of the year. Often it doesn't let up until later in hurricane season. So I think that's going to be good news for most of us on land. Now, if you're watching in the Antilles, though, I think you're going to be at the highest threat level with this. Uh, right now, I'm not expecting anything major, but should it fit that corridor right and take advantage of that window of favorable conditions, you could have a tropical storm on your doorstep by the time we get into uh, the coming uh, days. I say the coming days. Well, let's say the middle to end of this coming work week. After that, though, I think with the islands out there and harsh wind shear in the Caribbean, it would take a lot for this system to pose much of a threat to Central America or the United States. Not to say it's a 0% chance, but uh, I don't think uh, right now it's something I would be overly worried about, but it is July and we're going to talk about it nonetheless. All right, let's switch on over now and take a look at some model guidance and see what our models do with this storm system and then touch on that Gulf threat. Here's that brand new American model that just came out. And remember where we're watching uh, as I move this ahead into time, or I guess I back it up to where we are now. Uh, so here we go. This is by Tuesday into Wednesday. We've definitely got an area of some spin out here on our vorticity map, kind of a couple areas trying to compete. It looks like for a main center of circulation there uh, on the GFS model. We go further ahead into time and notice it's an all right little wave here. And then it gets a little too far north, though, runs into that dry air or wind shear, hits the Antilles. It's really just an open wave. It would bring some rain for sure. Uh, and then just does not turn into much else. Now, you'll notice a couple other areas, though. Uh, yeah, we've got uh, the Pacific and the Gulf trying to get something going. We'll touch on that next up there, at least that area in the Gulf. Uh, but this one, you can see, again, tries to get into something, gets into the Caribbean, and eventually gets shredded apart. Same thing on our European computer model. Uh, now, the European keeps it a little bit further south, keeps it in that uh, better area for development, like we mentioned. Remember, less wind shear, less dry air the further south you go, and even warmer ocean temperatures, I would say, as well. So because of that, the European, I'd say, gets a name storm out of this, whether that's, um, oh, let me say, let me rephrase that, uh, maybe a storm. That could be a depression or our uh, D name storm, Dexter. Either way, though, a more healthy looking system on the European as it keeps that track further south and eventually and gets this into the lesser Antilles is probably a weak tropical storm, maybe a tropical depression. Hits the Caribbean and much like our other models, uh, runs into that dry air and wind shear again, or at least the wind shear at the very least, and gets shredded apart on approach to Central America. So right now, nothing super concerning in the models. Obviously, we'll keep you updated, come back for more information on this system. But let's switch on over now and talk about that potential for something to grow a little bit closer to home. Let's repeat the process, take a look at the ingredients, but zoom into the southeastern United States. You get the southeast coastline and the Gulf coastline. And uh, as we go into the week ahead, you'll notice things remain relatively moist, uh, at least a pocket of moisture, but it gets kind of sandwiched in between things. So this is by Tuesday into Wednesday. Uh, you can definitely see where we have that disorganized weather, kind of just like last week with 93L, or again, I guess earlier this week. But um, either way, we have that pocket of unsettled weather, that moisture field to the north, though. We got a lot of dry air and back out towards the east, or the western Gulf, I should say, also dealing with some pockets of dry air. Keep it going ahead into time, and that kind of becomes a little bit of a problem for this system, but notice on our model here, the GFS, it kind of gets a resurgence of moisture. A little wave comes in off the Atlantic, the one I showed you uh, earlier uh, in the video here to start things, and that kind of moistens things up again, still dry air around. You can see this belt of drier conditions up to the north, uh, but eventually uh, this system tries to spin up into something towards Louisiana and Texas as it gets enough of a kick here into the moisture field. 
Now, what about upper level winds? This is a little bit different than the last map I showed you. This is just upper level winds in general, so not showing um, from the mid levels all the way up. This just shows us where is the atmosphere kind of ventilating things. And uh, in this time frame that we're watching, uh, wind shear uh, is a bit iffy. It's again kind of like last week. We've got some stronger upper level winds coming down out of the north and east here. That could be blowing over the system, could you know help to keep it a little more tame. And I think that's why a lot of the models uh, don't do a lot with it. But I'll caution you, if we get any of these upper level pieces of divergence to shift south enough that this gets into a more favorable upper level pocket of air, uh, then this absolutely could have legs to run. And that's why we need to monitor it. And you can see that here with the GFS model. Go ahead and refresh it and get the latest. Uh, here we go. So it'll go into Monday. You can see that area of spin trying to get going off the South Carolina coastline. Uh, and kind of much like 93L works partially back inland, partially offshore, just a disorganized mess. And then eventually eventually gets far enough into the Gulf, taps into those very warm waters with enough moisture, fights off some of that wind here and tries to get a named storm going here towards uh, Texas and Louisiana by about a week or so from now. So we got plenty of time to watch that. We'll keep you up to date, but um, again, not overly concerned with that. But it's important enough that definitely worth putting in uh, the video here, I would say. Uh, now, you put all this together and, uh, well, what exactly does all, all this mean if we take a look at the ensembles? And uh, we'll start here with the European ensembles. Definitely the European model. A lot of members try to develop that Atlantic system. None of them get it very strong and most of them kill it by the time it hits the Caribbean. The Gulf system, I'd say a little bit of an uptick here, and you've even got some stronger members in there, some that even think about a hurricane a little bit. Uh, not overly concerned there either, but enough members that it is worth watching. And you look at the GFS ensembles, GFS ensembles just not very excited about that main development region energy. Again, they run it a little bit too far north, runs into dry air and wind shear, but more members showing that potential for something in the Gulf. So probably feeling like deja vu a little bit. We just talked about basically the exact same setup with Invest 93L to start this week. Now it's the end of the week and we're talking about the exact same thing, but a different uh, a different piece of energy that it's working with. So we'll see what it does, but uh, definitely a relatively active time period in the tropics compared to where we have been earlier this year. All right, let's switch on over now and take a look back home and give you an update on that forecast for the week ahead. Heat on the way and afternoon storm is going to be a common sight for many of us. Let's start with the heat part of that. Heat advisories in orange, excessive heat warnings in the pink, and uh, yeah, it's uh, heating up in a big way. All thanks to that upper level ridge of high pressure we've been talking about. Also thanks to that, we've got more pieces of energy running right through the same area. So another pocket of rain this afternoon working through Illinois, Indiana, and uh, eventually going to get into Kentucky and really through much of the Ohio River Valley. Because of that, the fact that we've already seen this exact same story a good bit this week, we are seeing some flash flooding. So, you know, the, the flooding of July's continue here. We've got to you know, um, be on our A game here and continue to watch this. Have a way to get watches and warnings. If you live in a flood prone area, obviously uh, know your precautions ahead of time uh, as uh, a lot of heavy rain still on the way for parts of the country. You can see that already going on out there for many of us. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about exactly why this is. It's that upper level ridge, but it's also energy uh, rotating around it. This is this afternoon. Here's that big high pressure here in the mid levels kind of parked right over this region and what you get with that sort of setup is uh, you know a flow that kind of goes around it just like this and uh, you see these little pieces of energy I'll kind of circle here and uh, we'll do a blue color these are little upper level short waves as we call them in meteorology and basically they're just little places of lift they help to cause lift and that in the summertime or really any time of year but especially the summertime can lead to pockets of very heavy rainfall and that's exactly what we're going to see continue to rotate around this ridge and that's been happening all week in the same areas and that's another reason why uh, that uh, flooding threat is heightened for much of the Ohio Valley and even into portions of the mid-Atlantic over the coming time frame now how is this going to change well it's really not is the problem this ridge is going to rotate a little bit more uh, and you're going to see all this energy still just getting boxed into this corridor right here uh, and uh, funneling in more pockets of rain pockets of storms some severe weather and flooding as well now by the time we get into Monday check out this piece of energy up in the Northeast if you're living in New Hampshire Vermont, Maine. I know you've had some storminess, some severe weather. Uh, count your blessings though, because you've got a shot of dry air coming. Uh, it's going to feel like fall almost for many of you. And I'm envious. I'm sure many of us in the East Coast are. 
but there's the chance some of that drier air could try to sneak down the backside of the Appalachia chain, backdoor cold front, uh, as we call it, or more of a backdoor dry front, or really more than anything this time of year. Uh, so that'll be potential. But generally speaking, this ridge not going anywhere, continuing to lock into place for many of us. And you can just see more of the same throughout the next week here as it just parks over the eastern United States. So I'll move east and west a little bit, and that will affect your weather in a big way if you're on that borderline, because you could be kind of cool and rainy one day relatively speaking at least, and then the next day get bumped up into the very hot and uh, warm and muggy side of things. And that's going to especially be common in the Northeast uh, here throughout the next week or so. And now because of this, severe weather chance is going to be bouncing around, but generally speaking, if you look at our supercell composite here, uh, it's on that upper fringe of the ridge where we've got the ring of fire, we've got those pieces of energy rotating through, and you can see the northern plains going to definitely think cash in on the most severe weather. Now outside of there in the mid-Atlantic, the Ohio Valley where those storms move through, downburst potential, strong winds, uh, heavy rainfall, lightning, and all that as well. But in terms of an all-hazard severe threat, still bottled up into the northern plains, and that's typical for this time of year. You can see that's definitely continuing here on the model through at least the next seven to 10 days. All right, let's switch on over now and talk about rainfall potential and that dry air on the way for some while others continue to bake. Timing out the rainfall for you, you'll see the rain's going to be the highest percentage wise uh, right along that ridge that we've just been talking about on the periphery, the ring of fire. I'm not going to stop this day by day, but just get the idea of what's happening here. Uh, all the rain starting up in the plains and moving around this thing through the Ohio Valley, through the Midwest, at times getting into the northeast, at times getting into the southeast. And then you can see here on the model by the middle of this coming week, some of that energy gets down into the southeast coastline. That's what we've been talking about there with that Gulf piece of energy. So kind of more of the same here on the way for many of us. Now here's our muggy meter, our dew point map, all the same thing. You can call it whatever you want. It's going to tell you how muggy it is out there and uh, watch what happens. So this is this afternoon. Let me back it up. This is today. Most of us pretty muggy unless you're up in Maine or northern uh, North Dakota or northern Minnesota. It's not going to feel very good out there. It's going to be uh, hot. It's going to feel sticky air that you can wear as they say. Watch what happens with that piece of energy in the northeast though. Boy oh boy doesn't that look nice. Here we go by Monday afternoon. Uh, again, if you're in New England, you know, count your blessings. Dew points in the 40s in July, you just don't see it very often. So uh, a true blessing there. Elsewhere, if you're under this ridge, it's still hot, still muggy. And remember, it's the edge where these two air masses meet that we're going to have higher in severe weather chances and rainfall chances. So wherever that edge moves is where the active weather will move. And you can see, uh, you know, some of that dry air, this is what I was talking about. Some of the models sneak it even down into the southeast. This is by Wednesday here in Charlotte. I'm begging for it, and I'm going to really analyze this before I go on air tonight and promise anybody dry air in July. But uh, there's definitely potential for a backdoor cold front uh, to get all the way back down, even in potentially the Carolinas, seeing some nicer air here by the middle of this coming week. We'll hope for it. Fingers crossed. Uh, elsewhere, though, Mississippi River Valley. No, not happening right now, at least. And uh, you can see uh, by the time we get uh, back on later into this week, a lot of that mugginess returns for many of us. But with that active pattern continuing, more shots of dry air coming into the northeast that try to sneak down the backside of the Appalachia chain from time to time. Obviously not a guarantee, but is a possibility with a pattern like this. Final thing I'll leave you with are rainfall totals over the next seven days. Yeah, you guessed it. Where I just showed you it was going to rain, that's where we're going to see the heaviest rain. So, you know, definitely uh, don't downplay this, though. This could be uh, the potential of flooding will be on the rise, we'll say, from the Dakotas into Nebraska and uh, into uh, Minnesota, Iowa, and into the Ohio Valley. Sorry, I just realized I did the Obama thing just now. The If you've ever heard Obama talk, uh, whenever he's thinking, he'll go, uh, we're like, uh, I just did that. So that was kind of funny. But uh, either way, <laughs> rain on the rise up into the Midwest, into the Ohio Valley, and uh, then obviously down into the Gulf Coast as well with that Gulf energy that we're tracking. Good news, looking pretty dry over Texas and Oklahoma, and we could uh, definitely use that. Like I said, we've had a lot of flooding problems there so far this month. Alrighty, folks, so that's all I've got for you on this uh, Saturday, July 19th. Again, that it is, and I'll be back tomorrow with an update. Tune in tonight at 10 for uh, WCCB Charlotte. I'll have the latest on your local forecast, and if you live outside of the viewing area, always download the WCCB News app. Hit the little watch live thing at 10 o'clock tonight, and uh, you'll see yours truly. And then at 11 for ABC Columbia. Uh, so I'll see you all then, or I'll see you back here tomorrow. Y'all have a great one. Stay safe, and I'll see you all then.